chapter 16, The Threads of Fate. He's down on top of Merlin's tower as Camelot lies in chaos below you. And Merlin attempts a spell to erase you from existence. I won't let you do this, Merlin. None of us will. <laughs> you speak as if you stand a chance of stopping me. Arthur steps forward, his hands gripping Excalibur's hilt. It's not too late, Merlin. You can put it into this. You must. You cannot see the pain you've caused the very kingdom you claim to protect. The pain you're causing me? Look into your heart, old friend. Turn back while you still can. Merlin stares at Arthur, his resolve wavering. <sighs> and then, in less than a heartbeat, rage overtakes his expression and the moment that's lost. No! This is her doing! He flings out an arm, pointing one gnarled finger at you. She is the real threat to Camelot. She will lead you to doom. The only way to prevent this chaos is to remove her entirely. That is not your decision to make. Even if I had done the things you blame me for, I am a person, Merlin. I laugh, cry, I have people who love me. Arthur steps forward to rest a protective hand on your shoulder. Yes, you do. To kill me would be bad enough, but to erase my past, as well as my future, is pure evil. I will not allow it to happen. Then try and stop me if you wish. It will only be your doom. He lifts one hand in the air towards the spell he is weaving, which shimmers like a silvery mirror. Its surface moves and responds. More images from your life swim across it. Your childhood mother's smile the day you left Carmelide. Uh, whatever he's doing to my past, it hurts. You lunge forward with a slash of your dagger, but Merlin waves a free hand, and a wave of air knocks your blow aside. No! Princess. Let's not stand as you as Arthur advances on his former advisor, with Excalibur raised. But before he can close the distance, Merlin uses magic to summon projection projectiles directly at you. If you are so determined to fight me, I will see that you regret it. Look out. Lancelot lifts his shield in front of you and the missiles bounce off of it, leaving scars on the metal in their wake. You'll have to try harder than that. Come, Arthur, we can flank him. You can try, but I am not one of your common knights. Those same motes of magic begin to glow at Merlin's fingertips, and two shoot towards Arthur and Lancelot, while a third arcs towards you. Flinch, duck, deflect the magic with my dagger, duck. You dodge out of the way moments before the glowing projectile hits and it vanishes over the battlements behind you. Ha, huh, well done. It will take more than that to stop me. One of the projectiles slams into Arthur and he staggers, but stays upright. Ugh. Cease this unruly foolishness! You cannot prevail! I will never cease fighting for Cam Camelot. Arthur lunges in, swinging Excalibur and forces Merlin off balance as he dodges to one side. Now, Lancelot. Lancelot unleashes a swing of a sword, aiming for Merlin's unprotected neck. But Merlin's skin shifts, discoloring, wrinkling, until it almost resembles bark. Lancelot's blade strikes true, but merely glances off of hardened skin. You will need to fight harder than that. More magic. His next blows and Arthur's deflect off. Merlin returns him in kind, lashing out with a series of vines from his free hand. Behind him, the silvery surface in the air continues drawing in the comet's power, unraveling the threads of your life. Then you feel a familiar tingle in your spine, the same one you felt during the fight with Agravain before. Fool! Your vision wavers as you see Merlin reaching out, but not towards the greater spell he is weaving to unmake you. He snatches a thread of red energy drifting down from the comet and sends it slamming into Lancelot, burning through his chest. It clutches the gaping wound, falling to one knee as his life, his blood spills across the stones. Oh. You stagger as the vision vanishes. Lance at Lancelot, he stands unharmed, sword in hand until... Fool! No, it's gonna happen again. 
As Merlin reaches for a thread of the comet's energy, you spin towards Lancelot with mere seconds to spare. I'll pull Lancelot out of the way, distract Merlin, pull him out of the way. Look out! You grab him by the shoulder and pull him aside just as the sickly red power flies past, burning a hole straight through one of the tower's walls. That was close. Another vision flashes before your eyes, a spell aimed at Arthur. You lunge across the tower and slam into him, knocking him out of the way before the magic can hit him. Thank you, my love. You share a brief, steadying smile with him before Merlin snarls with frustration. How are you doing this? I told you I would not let you destroy me or Camelot. You should have listened. Power gathers in his hand again, but another vision flickers over you, and you drop to the ground, letting his attack fly uselessly over your head. So you've learned to harness your paltry visions. How irritating. Furious, he turns away from the spell he's weaving with the pow comet's power, using both hands to fling more magic at all of you. As long as he's busy trying to kill us, he cannot finish the spell. Don't let up, it's working. And as another vision flickers over you, you see an opening. Arthur on his left. Other slashes to one side, Sagarin Merlin, even though Excalibur's blow does not break his enchanted skin. And Lancelot, your shield. With your help, Lancelot deflects more of Merlin's magic as you stand your ground before the enemy, offering a tempting target. Thank you for the warning. And without Merlin's attention, the silvery spell begins to waver. Even if we cannot kill him, if we can just break his hold... As the three of you press the advantage, Merlin begins to weave a new spell in the air. Green ruins flicker, growing into a blinding flash of light. Enough! Lancelot freezes, as does Arthur. Their weapons lower as their arms go slack at their sides. For a moment you see the green runes reflected in their eyes, but then you realize the glow comes from within. Arthur, can you hear me? His expression does not change. The man you love does not even look at you. Oh, he can hear you. He simply does not care what you have to say any longer. Merlin turns to Arthur, his expression as cold as the deepest winter. I regret needing such extreme measures to restore your loyalty, Arthur. But, though this will hurt you to witness, the pain will be over soon. Do what is best for Camelot, your majesty. And you, Sir Lancelot, give the princess the same traitor's punishment that awaits you. Arthur and Lancelot move towards you. The swords raise once again and attack. Lancelot Arthur, you must stop this madness. There's no recognition in their eyes, only cold green fire. You dodge one sword swing, blocking another with your leather-clad arm, as Merlin turns back to the mirror-like spell hanging in the air. The wizard pulls a crystal from his robes with a wicked grin. You will not suffer for long, princess. Once all your past is imprisoned in this crystal, I will erase you from the present just as thoroughly. Lancelot and Arthur move with mindless purpose, flashing at you again and again. One blow drives you back against the tower's wall with a crack, and you stumble and hit the ground hard. Arthur looms over you, and he lifts Excalibur for a killing blow. Arthur, no, please stop. Though his expression is blank and passive, a single tear streams down his cheeks at your words. His arm trembles as if he's fighting against his own movements. The sword wavers. I know this isn't you, my love. You can fight it, please. As the deadly blade hangs over your head, you reach out in desperation. As the man you hope to marry swings a sword, you stare him down, pleading. You are King Arthur, just and noble ruler of Camelot, and you love me. Remember that you love me. Excalibur arcs through the air, slams into the stone floor beside you as the green glow suddenly fades from his eyes. Horror dawns on his face when he realizes what he almost did. I'm sorry, my love. I did not want to strike, but Merlin's magic pulled me as if I was on strings. I know, but you've fought it, and you're free now. <sighs> Look out! Arthur barely lifts his shield in time as Lancelot, his eyes still glowing, that foul green slams a sword into, into it with bone-shattering force. Finally, this is almost over. 
Over Arthur's shoulder, Merlin has returned to the shimmering spell. Images of your life flicker across it faster and faster as he works. As they do, you feel a sickening hollowness in your chest as if some part of you is being unmade. Ugh. Lancelot swings his sword again. Arthur raises his caliber to meet it with a mighty clash, but Lancelot leans into the blade and it slices forward, leaving a gash across Arthur's forehead. He slashes back in retaliation, raining blows upon Lancelot, but his best friend, the greatest knight in Camelot, is as unyielding as stone. Deja vu washes over you in a stomach-churning wave. This is finally it. The first vision I saw. They will kill each other if I don't stop them, and I will be unmade. You glance between the fight to Merlin. He holds a crystal aloft, funneling the threads of your life from that mirror like spells into the depths. Hazan! Karen! Karen! That crystal, if he's using his powers to shape the past and future through it, maybe I can too. Lancelot, please, you are stronger than this. Don't make me hurt you. While he battles Lancelot, you creep towards Merlin, who is absorbed in his magic. You lunge for the crystal, crystal and grab it. GET AWAY! And as your hands touch its surface, your head suddenly swims. You feel a connection to that hovering, mirror-like surface, the same feeling you have on the edge of a vision. You reach out the same way you reach for your visions and tug. Almost immediately, the images flashing through the mirror change. Instead of your past, you see... Merlin, looming beside Arthur's set at the round table, a future round table, his face as withered and cruel as it is now. There will be no treaty with Orkney, nor any who oppose us. How do we greet our enemies, your majesty? He places a hand on Arthur's shoulder, and Arthur, whose eyes glow a familiar green. The cold voice that comes out is not his own. With death... Another flash, Merlin stands atop the burning walls of another Camelon, its streets silent except for the crackling of flames, the screech of carrion birds, and his laughter. If none of you will bow to reason, then your corpses will bend to my will. Camelot will stand eternal, even if I must lay its new foundations upon your bones. You jolt back to the present, mind racing as the crystal thrums between your and Merlin's hands. I changed his spell. He's not the only one with power tied to the past and present. What if I wanted a different end to this day, to lock his futures away? The vision suddenly vanishes from the surface of the spell as real Merlin turns to his ancient face twisted with rage. What are you doing? You will ruin everything! Merlin reaches out in a surge of power and visions of your past overtake the spell's surface. Once more, Arthur's words echo in your ears. It lifts my heart to know that you love me as I do you. You can feel a precious memory slipping away, stolen by Merlin's magic. And more of your strength is slipping away with it, your very being. Meddling brat, you will be no more. No. You cannot erase our love no matter how hard you try. There's no power on this earth that can keep us apart. Summoning every scrape of willpower, you reach for the spell and bend it. Light swirls around you, growing brighter as the ground trembles. My future is what I alone make of it. Take his future instead. The light flares, a sound like a roar of thunder shakes the tower. You blink away tears as the light fades, only to see where Merlin once stood. Are you both all right? What happened? Both of them stand beside you, their gazes clear of Merlin's influence as you all stare at the large crystal that has taken up his place atop the tower. Inside its depths, Merlin pounds helplessly against the inside, his face scarlet with rage. I trapped him in his own spell. Those red threads of power leeching from the comet phase as it completes its passage over Camelot, slowly trailing away from the city. And you have saved us all. All of Camelot. I fear we still have much to do in the city below, but he cannot harm any us anymore if we are content to leave him here. He glance down at the city so far below this tower. Yeah, it is a long fall from here, 
if I wish to give him a more permanent fate. Choose Merlin's fate. Leave him bound in the crystal. Huh. I don't understand what Choose's fate is, though. Guess we'll find out. And he's smiling. I don't like that. This crystal is a secure prison, but I think if we, we destroyed it, we would also destroy Merlin. So it would mean his death. A death he has earned many times over. Treason, betrayal, manipulating knights, citizens to fight their own kin. He turned the crystal with Lancelot and Arthur at her side. Well, Merlin, give me one good reason not to destroy you. I am invaluable asset to this kingdom, a faithful mentor and friend to Arthur. Have I not protected you since your youth? Have I not given you a kingdom? It wasn't yours to give. I... He smacked the side of the crystal and mystical chime echoes through it, cutting off Merlin's words. Enough. I say we destroy. You will never be truly safe while Merlin lives, and neither will Arthur. And Arthur, what do you think? He has almost been like a father to me. I want to believe that some part of him could learn to regret what he has done, but... You would spare him? No. I cannot discount the harm he did to Guinevere, but a lifetime of imprisonment is, imprisonment is punishment enough, is it not? For a moment, the anger fades from the trap wizard's face, replaced by a hint of sorrow. I truly meant well, Arthur. I have protected you for so many years against more powers than you know. Will you not protect me now? Merlin extends an arm within the crystal as if trying to reach Arthur. The king stares at his old mentor for a long time before turning his back. This is not my decision to make. He's right in Princess Guinevere's life above all else. She should judge your fate. And if she wishes you dead, I would not stop her. Arthur, no, please! He does not turn to look at the wizard. Only nods to you. Lancelot places an encouraging hand on your shoulder before you step forward. I think of the forest, the trees. We keep him imprisoned. And let him sit there every moment of eternity. And watch as we do good for Camelot. But if an evil does arise that we cannot take. Or we could always seek out his counsel too. <clears throat> then we can release him. Imprisonment is punishment enough. He cannot harm anyone within the crystal. That is what matters. You turn your back deliberately on the crystal, letting Merlin's tiny voice fade into nothingness. And it's time for Camelot to know peace again. Arthur pulls you close, strong arms, cradling you protectively. When I thought I might lose you. But you didn't. Arthur touches your cheek, and in the next moment he... He is kissing you, pouring all of his fear and relief into one perfect, endless moment. <clears throat> I hate to interrupt, but all the kingdom is slightly on fire. You break away from Arthur, unable to hide your smile. I know. I am so glad to be alive. Arthur gently cups your cheek with one gauntleted hand. I am glad beyond words to see you alive. I could not have survived losing you. Fortunately, I am rather hard to kill. <laughs> One struggle is not wholly over yet. Eh, let us see what awaits us below. When you step out into the courtyard below the tower, you find yourself in the middle of a deadly standoff. Guards loyal to Merlin and scowling lords, all with swords drawn, face off against knights you recognize. For the last time, stand down, you fools, or I'll have you all your treasonous heads. Peace, brother. Stay your blade. All of you lay down your arms in the king's name. You stand beside Arthur and Lancelot, rest a hand on his sword hilt. 
A hush falls over the crowd, all eyes turning towards the king and to you. Today has been a great, has been a day of great tragedy for us all. But the princess has put an end to the true cause of this bloodshed. Merlin was behind all of this anguish. Some of you he manipulated through lies or greed. Others he turned with dark magic, forcing you to turn on one another. But whether you served him willingly or were his victims, his power has been broken. How can you be so sure the fighting is over? Because... Camelot is stronger than its enemies. We cannot promise that there will ever again be trouble within these walls, but today, thanks to the bravery of many, Camelot still stands. It's better to keep the whole crystal thing close to the chest so bad people don't know. Because then they'll free him and then, you know, go on a thing to free Camelon. You know how that works. And with your help, it always will, no matter what evil rises against us. Murmurs through the crowds, wounded knights and civilians shift warily as they eye one another, some of the anger ebbing, but not all. What about the princess, then? Didn't she commit treason? Anger flares in your chest, but Arthur holds up a hand, cutting off any more murmurs. I know some of you took up arms because of rumors about Princess Guinevere. And I'm here to tell you they are false, every one of them. You would say so. You're the one accused of conspiring in her misdeeds. I am her loyal knight. I hope I am still her friend, but I am nothing more. There's a hint of an apology in his voice, meant only for you. And there is only the slightest hesitation as he goes on. He shouldn't need to apologize, really. The princess loves Arthur. And Hall has always been loyal to him. The rumors were a manipulation. Merlin knew I was a threat to his power, his influence. He planted the seeds well, and you fell for them. Or you chose to believe them for your own reasons. This is the last I want to hear of such rumors today. They are vile and cruel gossip. Arthur reaches for you, and you slide your hand in his. Tomorrow they will be an attack on my queen. The lords, and a few knights fighting on Merlin's behalf, slowly lay down their weapons, raising their hands in surrender. So, there will still be a wedding? Of course. Our intended wedding day was disrupted, but I'm still betrothed to your king. So, tomorrow, I will marry him. Some faces look shocked, but a cheer erupts, followed by another. Soon, the courtyard is filled with applause as Arthur turns to address the crown. I know that Merlin's betrayal has caused much pain today, but tomorrow I hope we can begin the process of healing. You are all invited to the wedding, and let us put the past behind us. A fresh cheer goes up, but among the cheers there are still some familiar faces, torn by doubt, anger, and grief. Brother, please, Lancelot meant no harm, otherwise he would not have spar spared me. You cannot know his reasons, when he struck us both unconscious with his own sword. He could have killed you. Wine angrily turns to stride into the keep, and across the courtyard from him, you spy Agravine among a cluster of his men, all bruised and bound in chains. Must these bindings be so tight, cousin? No. They can be tighter. With a flick of her fingers, the chains around Agravine's body cinch tighter, and he hisses with pain. You turn to Arthur and Lancelot. We may have stopped the fighting, but what happened is not easily forgotten. Boyne does not seem to have forgiven us. And I worry about Morgana. Agravine's betrayal wounded her deeply, though she will never admit it. Perhaps the three of us uh, should check on our friends. Help make amends as best as we can. Should heal what wounds we can. I like her dress, it's very pretty. Starting with the brothers, I think. You find Gareth pleading with Gwine in the round table chamber. The surface of the table scarred with blade marks and the day's conflicts. And several chairs are overturned. The moment Gwine sees you, he spins towards Lancelot with a growl hand tied on the hilt of his sword. We may have addressed the princess's treachery, but you will still answer for your son, Lancelot. You almost killed my brother. He did no such thing. You deny it. We all saw it. It was Merlin, Gwine. You've taken control of Gareth with magic. I wasn't trying to hurt your brother, I was trying to keep him from killing us. 
Gareth limps over, bruised and contrite, and puts a hand on Gawain's shoulder. It's true, Gawain, my body was not my own. Some dark magic forced me to fight, and I'm grateful Lancelot stopped me before I did something unforgivable. Come now, Gawain. You know, Lancelot wouldn't draw a sword on Gawain without cause. Do you truly have so little trust for one of your fellow knights of the round table? He glances across the legendary table at his fellow knight. Anger in his eyes flicker, but does not quite fade. I... I suppose you would not lie about Merlin's treachery. But you still could have found a way to deal with my brother short of a naked blade. Dude! All I did was hit him in the back of the head to knock him out, dude. You act like he cut him. Even though I turned my own blade against Arthur, our king? You... You know you would have done the same as Lancelot in his position. Do not deny it, Sir Gawain. Your nobility and loyalty are legendary. Ugh. He releases a sword and heaves an exasperated sigh. Fine, I will let y'all make a hero of me if you insist. I do, cousin. There's still some tension as he gazes at Lancelot, but it gives him a gruff nod of understanding and Lancelot smiles gratefully. Then I accept your apology. You leave the brothers, but as you head through the halls you find several commoners glaring at the cluster of nobles who sided with Merlin. Those are the ones who attack the people at Merlin's behest. You scared me. You tried to hurt people. Only people who were interfering in affairs above their station. You think you're beyond judgment? I'm afraid... I'm not afraid of you. The nobleman reaches for a sword, but Lancelot whips his own from a sheath and levels it at the man's neck. I would tread carefully, my lord. You've already followed Merlin's lies down one dangerous path this day. All of this lot did. And they think they'll see no punishment for it. They can't try to kill innocent people and get away with it. No, they cannot. Other steps forward and gives Merlin's goons a cutting look before turning to address the crowd of angry commoners. You are not the only ones that you have wronged. Princess Guinevere had every reason to see justice serve, so I put their fate in her hands. Even those of High Station? Especially those of High Station. I decree that... They will be fined. F fined? Quite severely. And their loss will be the rest of your game. We will put the money towards setting Camelot and your homes to rights. I like the sound of that. Y your, ma your Majesty, please! Yep, nobles don't like their money being touched. Too bad, so sad. Other gestures and several loyal guards rush forward to lead Merlin's co-conspirators away. Thank you, Your Majesty. Princess, Sir Lancelot. Thank you. You all fought for your king and your fellow citizens. And we will not forget what you did. As you continue through the hall, several knights fall into step with you. So, Your Majesty, Your your Highness, all's well that ends well, right? I wouldn't call this well. The price is a mess. Cheer up, Kay. We're all here to help set its right. After all, tomorrow's a big day for our king. And our princess. Do not intend to see all my wedding preparations go to waste. It will be perfect. Thank you all. For staying true to Arthur and I. You are more than worthy of our loyalty, your highness. Percival nudges his fellow knight with an elbow, and Kay nods begrudgingly. Both of you are... Why, thank you, Sir Kay. Every kiss begins with K. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hold. Like, I've been holding that one in. <clears throat> Arthur reaches for your hand and brings it to his lips for a tender kiss. It's where it all started. Camelot, clearly. The palace should could burn down around our ears tomorrow. As long as I end the day with Guinevere as my wife, it will be perfect. I agree. But I'd prefer if it would, uh, we did not burn down the palace. I've uh, had quite enough of flames. 
flittering in from the nearby courtyard, you suddenly hear raised voices. I'm sorry, would you like to say that a little louder? I didn't quite hear you. Oh, dear. You follow Morgana's voice outside to where she looms over an injured Agravine. Manacles and chains bind him, but, she glare, but he glares up at her furiously. I did what I felt I must. You did what you felt you must, really? If we don't intervene, she might finish off what we started, or what she started. Hmm. Do we have to intervene, then? I agree with him. Vengeance may give her a momentary satisfaction, but it will not bring her peace. You hurry towards Morgana, with Lancelot and Arthur at your side, just as a pair of guards haul Hagravine to his feet. Magic crackles at her fingertips. If you say one more word... You step forward and grab her wrist before she can raise her hand. There you are, Morgana. I have a question to ask you. As you pull her away, Arthur gestures shortly, and the guards hurry away, dragging Agravine between them. Well, what is so pressing? Nothing, really. I just wanted to keep you from killing Agravine in a fit of pique. If you calm down and you, uh, and you still want to roast him with magic, come and find me and we'll go down to the dungeons. Together. You know, my life was much easier when I passionately loathed you. Hmm, I know. If it makes you feel better, we can still insult each other from time to time. <laughs> How generous of you. Well, I owe you for your help against Merlin's forces. We... Would have been lost without you. I know. Even without her, I'm sure we would have found a way to... Shh! Let her have her moment. She earned it. Mm, thank you. And you must admit, I looked fabulous saving you all. Mm, no one can argue with that. In all honesty, perhaps I should be thanking you. I knew there were problems at court, but I never could trace them to their source. Now, I suspect Merlin was the one who encouraged such disapproval of women using magic. Hmm. He likely didn't want the competition. Or was afraid one of us would catch him in the midst of his crimes. Which is precisely what happened. Without Guinevere's vision, we might not have never, or we would have, might not have never thwarted his machinations. You think back to the vision, you saw Merlin's plots of a bounty laid for the boy you have met. A boy who has no reason to fight his uncle. We will see that all of his schemes... Past and present are torn up by the roots. None here shall threaten your family. And I'm grateful to you. I may spend a little more time in Camelot. Now that things feel safer. You should. Mordred deserves to be around his family. And I know Arthur would be thrilled to have him here. Hmm. There's much he can learn in Camelot. And I would, uh, I'm much what I like to know um, of my only nephew. It would be nice to show him more of the world than a stone cottage in the woods. A castle should do nicely. And perhaps Mordred and I will make Camelot our home. Some of the time, at least. I would like that, Morgana. I would like that a great deal. Arthur holds out his arms to Morgana, who sighs. Listen, group hug! <sighs> Don't get maudlin on me now. Ah, you are my sister. I intend to be as maudlin as I wish. Uh, but, as disgusted as she sounds, a moment later she gives in and hugs her brother. When they finally part, you catch her hastily wiping a tear from one eye. I'm glad none of you died today, even if you can be insufferable. My lord, Mar Lady Morgana, I think that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Don't make me regret it. As Arthur laughs and Lancelot playfully elbows Morgana, you glance at others in the courtyard, knights bandaging their comrades' injuries, commoners helping each other, patch roofs, and neighbors bringing food to neighbors. Some wounds truly have been healed today. May it be a sign of hope for all of Camelot. As the sun sets, Lancelot takes his leave. Arthur takes a moment to change out of his battered armor before accompanying you through the castle halls. When I woke this morning, I 
I thought neither Camelot nor I might ever know peace again. But now here we are, alive and together. Yeah. I hope the kingdom does not need saving before the morrow. Because I've reached my limits of heroics for the day. <laughs> we can leave the saving to its other protectors for once. He smiles, reaching out to take one of your hands in his. Is it terrible to admit that even with everything that has happened, I keep thinking about how happy I am that tomorrow you will become my queen? I do not think it terrible, if only because my thoughts have been in the same vein. Queen Guinevere Camelot. I like how that sounds. As do I. But before we say goodnight, if you, you are not too tired, there's something I'd like to show you. What is it? These nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. <laughs> Listen, if you're laughing, you have to let me know. You you literally have to let me know in the comment section below. The most beautiful place in the castle, besides the gardens we have already shared. A private moonlit tower where no one will disturb us until morning. I would love to take you there to celebrate our victory and happiness that awaits us. Hmm. This is one time I think I'm gonna pass. I don't want either of us to fall asleep at our own wedding ceremony. Hmm, no, that would not set the right tone at all. And we will have plenty of time to celebrate after the wedding. I am already counting the moments. He leads you just inside your chambers, and you tilt your head to go up to kiss him. Slow and sweet. Sleep well, my love, for this time tomorrow. I'll be escorting you to our royal chambers. As my wife. Yee. That's sweet. Without further ado, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down in the description of the video. Plenty of things to check out there. And please remember to hit that subscribe if you're not already. And, uh, you know, try and get the word out about our channel. You know, a lot of content on this channel. As you can tell, I've been really uh, uploading a lot lately. So hopefully you're all enjoying each and every little bit that I'm trying to get done. But uh, I will not sour it with anything negative there, as I want to, but in terms of, you know, trying to get as much done as humanly po as fast as humanly possible. So uh, what did you all think? As I told you, I felt like um, when this book first started, I, I did not believe we would get a book two. And I still don't believe it. Uh, you look at, uh, what was it, Crown in the Flames and... Blades and all the other books that we've had and were like crown they ended very abruptly and I think it was book three Don't quote me on that it's been so long since we covered that literally years um, But they ended that very abruptly. Let's be honest and um, Then in terms of blades, we never got a, a sequel to that. We never got the next book still waiting on that aren't we? Um, still waiting on a lot of book sequels, huh? Like Most Wanted and all these other books that, you know, we've been promised that we're going to one day get a sequel to. That a lot of you and I have been pretty much waiting for. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we kept interest in, in this app, let's be honest. There were several books that we really did enjoy, some of the books and, and whatnot. And, and we were promised there would be a sequel. And then some of them have been yet since canned. And then some of them are still up in hiatus after years. Let's be honest, they'll be canned too. So, <sighs> about I digress. One can only hope that they'll actually continue to write good stuff that isn't all about bounce chicka wow wow. Because you know what, I'll say this. Out of all the apps out there, I don't know what I say, out of all the gin joints out there, you know, like they say in the 40s and 50s, um, pretty much, like, Choices was the one good visual novel app that I actually did enjoy. And they had a wide variety of stories. It wasn't all about the bounce, chicka, wow, wow. And, like... Over time, the app has turned more and more towards that and less of great story writing, right? And you would think that they would have utilized what's been going on in the past couple years to realize that 
people are craving better story writing and more immersion and getting away from real issues than ever. And if anything, they've doubled down, or if not quadrupled down, on writing what every single other app does. Literally, I have a list of them. There's like 12 visual novel apps right now that are equal to or greater than choices in popularity. And they're all writing the same crap, using the same stories, using the same bount chicka wow wow. And choices is slowly devolving into what they're doing. It's really sad, isn't it? But without further ado, thanks for watching. Love your beautiful faces, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.